Hello again, young researcher. It's been a couple of months since we last met. Even though you've been hard at work in executing your methodology as we prepare for the much-awaited climax of your year-long research. Thus, today, we will dive into the last two chapters of your RP. Chapter 4, for data and analysis, and Chapter 5, for conclusion and recommendation. These two chapters are meant to report to the audience the key findings of your study. It is an important trait of anybody in research to judge which results are important to the study, or at least which approach will be used to package your results. After which, you will have a door to both close and open. You will close the door with your conclusion, but at the same time, you will open the door for future endeavors by recommending certain things for other researchers to pick up on. The results section will begin by presenting all the data and observations gathered by the experiment. As these are extensive, it would be helpful to utilize tables to help organize your data, quantitative or qualitative. Make sure you label each table column completely with the correct units and significant figures observed in numerical data. After outlining the data numerically, a visual representation of the results would be helpful to further highlight the effect that your independent variable had on the dependent variable. This representation could be done through the use of graphs or diagrams. After presenting each table, graph, and diagram, be sure to organize them with the appropriate section headers. These would help guide readers as to what part of the research the data pertains to. Finally, compose an accompanying description for each section of data to explain the trends seen by those numbers and graphs. If any statistical tools were used in the interpretation of your data, it would be helpful to include them in this description of the trends of your results. Now that you have itemized every raw observation you had in the study, you must now explain to the audience the deeper meaning behind them. This is where the discussion and analysis section comes in, and through it, you will pick up from those descriptions of the trends of each set of data. It is important to note that you will present this in light of what is already known, and this will entail evaluating some of the scientific concepts you learned in science class to explain the results. In this section, it is important to accomplish some objectives. First, you must elaborate on definite or possible mechanisms of your result. Did your results happen as expected by your hypothesis? Maybe this is your cue to return to the RRL and explain the results in light of that chapter. Or did things not go as planned? This is where it is important to also explain possible sources of discrepancies or error in your experiment. Again, backed up by your RRL. After establishing these connections of your results to your past RRL and hypothesis, it is time to offer a summarized version of all of your findings through the conclusion. This is a general statement about your study, stating the final and verified results. It is important to look back on two previous sections in composing this problem statement and objective section, the hypothesis, and your introduction. In looking back at your problem statement, it is important to compare your results to the initial objectives you made months ago. Were you able to meet those objectives with the project that you just conducted or not? You would then look at your hypothesis, where you will see if your initial educated guess was accepted, rejected, or partial in either of those sides. Finally, to further highlight how much your study enhanced knowledge in your chosen scientific field, it would be good to wrap up this section by also making ties to your significance and contribution of the study sections of your introduction. Now that you have established that your study has made huge strides in a certain field of science, researchers would undoubtedly want to pick up from where you left off. As you have outlined how much your study hit or missed your objectives and hypotheses previously, 
it would be good to provide more direct insights on how to rework the study for future research. This is where you will end your paper with the recommendations section. The recommendations may come from revisions on the objectives, scope and the limitations, methodology, and data gathering. You may also want to look into your previous progress reports where you outlined any challenges faced in conducting your study. Make sure to provide concrete ideas on how you would make these suggestions work. Think of it as your chance to go back in time and tell your past self how he should conduct this research project. Well, young researcher, that puts the cherry on top of our research cake this year. Congratulations! You have just completed your research paper. It's been a year in the making, but at the end of it all, I'm sure you have learned a lot in your research journey. Whatever happens, I hope your scientific endeavors have come true as you continue in your quest to become the scientists of the future. Having finished your paper, we will now move into presenting those results publicly. It is time for your research project defense. Don't forget, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to your science teachers for academic consultation. Thank you for watching, and always remember, we are doing this ad maiorem dei gloriam for the Sustainable Development Goals.